This is Don't Panic, episode number 296, recorded December 14th, 2020. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and you. I am Sean Jennings, joined by two guys who clearly do not need me to do the show. It is Dan Miller and Colby Rabideau. Good evening, gentlemen. We need that bit. I, I, I already set up a bunch of bits that would have been funnier had we not missed last week, because they're all based on you two doing the show without me the previous week. But now that was two weeks ago, so you'll just have to work with me here. Yeah, we can only do it by ourselves one week in a row, and then we have uh, attachment issues. Yeah, I mean, you guys, I, I listened to the episode, which was very exciting for me. You guys did a great job. I hope you don't mind. I did take some notes, if that's okay, to share. All right. Sure. <laughs> Just a few. Because, again, overall, excellent job. You don't need me. The conversation was wonderful. Dan, at one point you said, and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm going to do something. I hope it doesn't fuck up Sean. Uh, it did. So thank you. <laughs> it required a, the, the stream got kind of funky, and it required a bunch of extra editing. So thank you. Um, you talked about how Campbell's soup. Had like, yeah, go ahead. Background thing going on. And all that yes, stuff? and it did. Yeah. It did screw up. It, it made the first fifteen minutes off sync, and then you turned it off. But then it made everything else also off sync because you turned it off. So <laughs> it's all right. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Um, let's see. You guys talked about Campbell's soups and how many flavors they have. It was like something like seventy flavors. I agree. That's irresponsible. Um, and there's no way half of them are even good at that quantity. That's too many flavors. It's just intractable. No, it's it's really you know it's like when you go to a restaurant that has two hundred items on the menu. Rarely does that work out for you. Um, one one story you talked about that I just wanted to add an extra point on. You talked about the opening of Super Mario World in Japan, which is very mm -hmm. exciting. But you missed the tech angle. I didn't just include it because it was fun. Um, there was a tech angle to it as well, which was um, it's the first roller coaster in the world to use AR glasses on the ride. And so you'll actually wear, they kind of look like hollow lens. You'll wear them up um, on your glass. And uh, as the ride is going on, you're racing the other Mario Kart. And like shit's going to appear in front of you, like those power block things that spin in the air. And when you hit them, it'll show like the, oh. the turtle shells going around. And I mean, no one's really ridden it yet, so they don't know for sure. But every rider will have these AR headsets um, that'll augment the ride and have like the score on it. It'll have like a heads up display. Um that was the really neat part of it. Do you think they're going to have the blue shell? Well, the thing is, you know, it's kind of funny because a power up, like, I, I don't under, they're two essentially roller coaster cars, right? So it's like, can they, like, if you get a, a mushroom, can it speed up? Like, I don't actually know how it influences the ride. Like, can it spin out if you hit a banana peel? Mm. <laughs> I, I hope so. That sounds truly unpleasant to be in the ride when it does that, but I think it, should i mean that would that would be absolutely insane i also think a part of it should be like going off the edge of rainbow road and having the little crane thing like bring you back onto the onto the track dream big man dream big I, it, i'm dreaming big i don't know if they're gonna listen but it's high tech technology they're doing stuff that's never been done before and then my last note you guys talk about the office 365 my analytics creepy thing that tracks employees right uh, I just want to include a personal note because my company has this. I don't think anyone on IT watches because they're too busy. But I will say I do get I started about a year ago, started getting these emails every week that are like, here's your statistical summary of how you did this week. And not only is the data straight up wrong, um, like it's not accurate. It also isn't useful in any way because they're like, you sent 300 emails this week. And I'm like, OK, is that like good bad there's no real context with it and they'll be like you had 18 quiet days this month and i'm like but i didn't <laughs> like you only track when i like ping people in teams like i do other work computer <laughs> no um Please. incredibly useless weird that's weird so anyway that was that those were my notes otherwise otherwise you guys did a really great job all right thanks only one real screw up not too yes. bad. And I and I and knew it, I knew it was going to be a problem. <laughs> that's so honestly, you did make it better by doing it, but by turning it off, but still you kind of you know, it's funny cuz this new platform we're using, maybe that's what I'll pick this week. Um is like so ultra beta 
that there's like a there's like a Facebook group that the company started to like get feedback from customers and there's like 40 people in it. Uh, I mean it's like almost nobody's using it. So I'm I'm discovering all the weird quirks and bugs and and things like that. So nice. We're always on the cutting edge. That's cool. Uh, but now that I've gotten through my complaints, what's up with you guys? Anything? My dishwasher <laughs> still hasn't come. It has been delayed twice now. Oh boy. Is it now? Do you think, how's it being delivered? Oh, like Lowe's. Mm. I don't know. Appliances are awful right now. I know. I just wish they would tell, like, if it's going to be too much, it's like, fine, just tell me it's going to be too much and I can, like, make contingency plans. But, like, don't do what they're doing, which is, like, every week change the delivery date. Like, every, like the day before it's supposed to be delivered, just push it out two weeks. Like, let's not do that. Yep. Uh, so I keep, I keep getting excited that I'm not going to have to wash dishes by hand anymore. And then this happens. This you might get cut down. used to it. Right. Right. My hopes have been dashed <laughs> twice. My hands are so dry. It's terrible. Um, I would say uh my my small bit of advice on that is to especially if it come if you got it from Lowe's. Lowe's, if they order it from like the warehouse, you're never gonna get it. Uh but the trick is if you go on the Lowe's site and refresh it every day, go to that mm-hmm. product, and as soon as they say they have one in the store. Oh, cancel your old order and place a new one right away. And and when it says it's actually in the store, yeah. that means it physically is in the store and there's no excuse for them to not deliver it like next day. I had to do that with one of my mother's appliances where it kept getting delayed and delayed. And I just happened to notice on the website, oh, there's one in stock in in the low store. So I like called them and I'm like, can you when can you know? They're like, oh, we'll deliver it tomorrow. It was great. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Yeah, Maybe it's do that. furniture, appliances, any of that big stuff. I don't know about you guys. I've been having a terrible time with packages. Um, I've got a couple just straight up where they're like, we don't know where it is or when you're going to get it, uh, which is yeah. very frustrating. Yeah, I've got some things in USPS limbo. They're ah. they're allegedly at the, the, the distribution facility, but they've been arriving at the distribution facility for multiple times a day for like a week now. Yep. But alas. Now I've had the opposite kind of experience where I've been in Vermont and I've had to get packages delivered and I expected it to be worse than in New York, but it's just as good, which is good. Like Amazon stuff has been arriving in two days. Uh, mm-hmm. I ordered an Apple thing and it arrived or yeah, it arrived super quick. So they have infrastructure, man. It's crazy, except when it doesn't work, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, you know why Amazon spent a gazillion dollars building their own infrastructure? Uh, it pays off, because <laughs> then you can actually, like, promise when stuff will be delivered pretty and then sure. deliver it. So, I'm pretty sure that they have just some guy in a truck delivering it here. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. I think for a while, I remember a time like some years ago when that's what Amazon delivery was like a person would roll up in their car and like drop some packages off. But like now we have like there are Amazon trucks or like vans that say like Amazon on the side and the people have like an Amazon uniform and stuff. I feel like in New York we never had that. We always had they always come in UPS, I think. Oh, it's a it's a warehouse. So anytime you see the blue van, it means they picked up from an actual Amazon warehouse. So if you don't have one near you, you won't you won't ever see the blue trucks. Right. Yeah. But now there are so many of the warehouses that they're pretty much yeah everywhere. Uh, I've had people. I've had Amazon packages like guys in like a U-Haul. Tr- I swear to God, a U-Haul truck filled oh, yeah. to the brim with Amazon packages that just pull up to my house and drop it off. Like it's the sketchiest thing you've ever seen, <laughs> but it's there in two days. Yeah. Yeah. Once in a, once in a while here, we get like unmarked white vans or like, like enterprise, there'll be like an enterprise van or something like, yep. I'm sure like, you know, 
the uh, the branded ones have to break down sometime, right? Well, there I know oh. there are like smaller local companies who started up just to like third party logistic the packages. Like I know I've seen a couple of them where it's like all they do is like local delivery. And so they'll they'll I don't know if they contract with Amazon or I don't know how it works, but they'll actually go and do Amazon or and other companies packages just in a small local area. I think that was like when I was used to get Blue Apron. It was a company. It was like it was not like UPS that delivered you Blue yep. Apron. It was like called like Laser Ship or something. Yes, I like, love Laser Ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like last delivery of the future. Right. They they called it. It was just last mile delivery or mm-hmm. something. Interesting. I've never gotten anything else via laser ship, but all the recent things I've ordered and all the stuff in New York ships via UPS, and all the stuff. Despite the fact that I thought I saw some guy in a truck drop this stuff off, all the stuff I've gotten shipped to Vermont has arrived via USPS, except. Uh, Something I had shipped in Florida was delivered by Amazon. But then I look, I click through in the USPS one, and it actually it shows you like, oh, there it was at an Amazon warehouse in Windsor, Connecticut, and then it went to Wallingford, Connecticut, and then it went to Meriden, Connecticut. And I saw that, I was like, wait a second, that's weird. That's my hometown. Is did they accidentally ship it to the wrong place? And then it got passed off to USPS, and then it came to Vermont, which is weird. that's so apparent. Yeah. I, Apparently, they can make these shipping labels and then handle them internally up to a point, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty common. I know FedEx has a program called Smart Post, if you've ever had a Smart Post package. Essentially, what they do is FedEx will ship the package all the way to your local USPS center. And then, again, that last mile, uh, they hand it off to USPS as a cost savings thing because it's cheaper because the mail truck comes to your house anyway. So it's cheaper for FedEx to give it to them versus drive a FedEx truck hmm. out. Usually, it's all usually for smaller packages, but um, it's a common program. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So if you ordered anything for the holidays, it will never arrive. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> have you guys ordered anything fun for for others for yourself for the holidays? Or we or are you keeping it light this year? Um. Anything fun. Because you're running out of my... ship shopping days. Yeah. I got myself a Christmas present. Ooh. Go on. Do tell. I so years ago you may remember me saying that I will never buy a, another pair of Bluetooth headphones that isn't the Apple smart Bluetooth headphones. I and as a result, you. as a result. I was like, well, now what do I do for an airplane? So I bought those like Beats over the ear headphones when they came out and they're just not very comfortable. So I, I took the AirPods Max Challenge. Oh, uh, no. And <laughs> that will be arriving tomorrow. That was my that was my uh, my Christmas present to myself. Well, I don't want to jump a good the gun, segue? should we talk about it? Because I have opinions. <laughs> OK, Strong yeah, let's, opinions. let's go. Let's do it. We've been talking for a while about uh, rumors, rumors, rumors. Apple's going to do over-the-ear headphones and all these big schmancy press events and no word. And then out of nowhere, they just drop them. The AirPods Max, $549, um, will be available tomorrow, as you mentioned. Um, they, uh, They come in five colors, space gray, silver, sky blue, green, and pink. Dan, which did you take? Sky blue. Ooh, okay, nice. Um, uh, they've got a bunch of features, uh, custom acoustic design with a 40 millimeter driver system. They sound good. Uh, also has the, uh, which, uh, the, which chip is it that's in the headphones and N- N one. I always mix them up. P one, W one, it is W one. Um, which has things like the adaptive equalizer, transparency mode, spatial audio, audio sharing, um, one thing that I'm going to give them credit for being neat is they actually brought the digital crown from the Apple Watch and put it on the headphones to offer precise volume control and wow. the ability to play or pause audio, skip tracks, answer or end phone calls, and activate series. There's also a separate noise control button for switching between noise canceling modes. Um, the ear cups um, pop on and off through what they call a revolutionary mechanism, also known as magnets. Uh, 
to uh and then uh let's see here they're powered by lightning uh not USB C a five minute charge will get you 90 minutes but they say a full charge will get you 20 hours um there's also a smart case uh that automatically puts them in a low power state um yeah there you go Dan you were sold on these was it just the fact that they're the they're the right chip from Apple or was there something else about them that that really got you excited um I am looking for a pair of over the ear headphones that mm-hmm. are noise canceling and that have the W1 chip and that are comfortable. The the Beats ones are like way too like they press too, way too hard into my head. Mm-hmm. Uh so this is the only I I'm pretty sure it's the only other pair of over the ear headphones that are noise canceling with the W1 chip other than the one that I have. So I was like, well, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Uh and I spent a lot of time like I prob- I maybe wouldn't have gotten these in the before times because uh, I like would spend all my time at my desk at work and it's like, well, I have my headphones are just permanently plugged into the computer. I don't really need noise canceling, so it's fine. But in the after times, I'm working from home and I'm constantly moving around. Now I'm in this other room with the laptop and the things are very fluid and having headphones that sound really nice and are wireless would would be something I would use every day instead of just like just when I'm on the subway or just when I'm flying. So that that was what sold me on it. Uh, the price was definitely hard to swallow. Um, <laughs> I won't lie. And the smart case looks really stupid. Uh, okay. That's my biggest hang up. But yeah, yeah. My, my biggest hang up is uh, we're not traveling like all the time in the traditional sense, but we will probably be living in a non-permanent situation for those foreseeable future. So we will be, everything will be getting put in bags and then moved somewhere else and then unpacked on like, you know, every one to three months or whatever. Right. And even that, like the smart case is so, is so thin and so flimsy. It's like, well, I'm not, how am I just going to, am I going to like, pack it in my shirts and my luggage or something maybe maybe that's the way to do it but then if you're actually flying uh you you couldn't do that you'd have to put it in your backpack somehow uh so that's that's the big downside i two big downsides i saw not having had them yet are the price and the smart case is really stupid it does seem like though if for a while the discourse was oh you have to put it in the case that's the only way to get to turn off but it seems like some of the reviewers did tests and it will go into the ultra low power mode eventually ish such that if you leave them on overnight, they don't actually lose that much battery. So that's the, that's the other cool thing. Like I think there are going to be a bunch of small things with these that could be great. Like not having to turn your headphones on and off ever again. You just mm-hmm. put them on your head and, and they work. That's pretty cool. Um, the detachable, magnetically detachable ear cups that's pretty cool i have to look i don't know colby what what do you think um i don't know i looked (laughs) and i i don't i don't have opinions about headphones really like i like when they work i like my airpods because they work with very little fuss almost all the time so if I had big headphones that worked with very little fuss almost all of the time. I think, I think I would be quite satisfied. I, I have a, like a, a Bose noise canceling headphone set, which is fine. It like works for planes and stuff. Like I, I used to use that in the office, but I don't use it now because I don't really need noise canceling in my house most of the time. Oh, that's the um, other thing I should say is that noise canceling, like when I'm in an office, I feel like I didn't need noise canceling as much because in the offices I've worked in, it's either been the case that there's just a constant dull roar, which is noise canceling enough, or no one's talking anyways because everyone's working in an open office and people are considerate. Mm-hmm. So they go, so it's completely silent. But now 
when I'm just in a room with one other person and at any point in the day, that person could be having a conversation just like I'm having right now, then that becomes really difficult <laughs> to do now because yeah. it's just one person talking. You can one hear every word and you're like, oh, yeah, like, wow, what's an F for you, Oregon? Blah, blah, blah. Like, woo, your, your mind just goes off into space. So noise canceling headphones are actually more important to me now than they were in the before yeah. times. At a past job before before I ever had noise canceling headphones, we my desk for a period of time my desk was next to the sales the desks of the salespeople who were selling the thing that we were working on. So we 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 all day long listened to them having the same conversation over just over and over and over again. And that was that was I think the time I could have used noise canceling headphones the most. But but my, mine. Mine kill me. So I, I bought the Jabra Elites, uh, the 85Hs, which I love. They're I think they're really fantastic. Uh, and they, um, the issue I have is that because I don't have an office, uh, it means both my team and everyone else in the building constantly stops by my desk for something, or sh- or literally just like shouts over the cube and think I can hear them because we're in a small office. And when I have the headphones on, I don't hear them. So they say my name about eight times, finally come around, tap me on the shoulder. And like, I've been, I've been calling for you. I've been, I, I've been asking for you. And I said, yeah, cause I'm on a freaking call. Leave me alone. Um, but alas, uh, yeah, you know, I'm a little bit torn on these. There are things I like about them, but to me, this is a little, you remember the iPod hi-fi? I I don't I this I was before my my Apple time. Yeah, let me let me put it in the it, it was basically the um that's not the right link to copy and paste. Uh it, it was basically a giant speaker that Apple put out and it immediately flopped and they sold like three of them and, and from what I recall, they sounded great. It was a great speaker. Looked stupid with a little iPod on top of it. But the issue is it was really expensive and nobody really needed it. And to me, these AirPods Max, it's like, I just look at 549 and I'm like, yeah, the chip is great and stuff. But, you know, my my jobbers were a buck 50 and I like them plenty. And yeah, okay, the Bluetooth doesn't work 100% of the time and it doesn't have all the slick features. But hot damn, they're, they're still pretty darn good. I go back and forth on the design. I, I don't know if it's good or not. I love the digital crown. I think that's really neat. I'll give them props for that. Um, I agree the case is ugly as sin. Um, and, uh, probably my biggest gripe is I don't like that. They call them AirPods. Cause to me, AirPods are tiny. Like I don't want to yeah. calling it an AirPod max. Is, it, it should be like air air packs or air pros <laughs> or air, but AirPods max is confusing to me, but that's also a yeah. stupid reason to complain. It really exposes some of the weird, I don't even know what you'd call it. The Apple marketing grammar, uh, <laughs> rules. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a good name, um, no. but but I'm sure guess... they're comfortable. I'm sure they sound nice. I'm sure the mics. I'll give them credit. I will say the mics, the microphones in my Jabras are fine. I wouldn't call them particularly good. I bet the mics in these are because my AirPod um, mics I find to be really good. So I bet these are going to sound really nice, which is which is a, a pretty valuable feature if you uh, use them on calls cool a lot thing... like I do. Another cool thing that these have, uh, well, two things really that other headphones don't have that I think people, that I think can justify a slightly higher price. I don't think it's $550, but is one, they have that like Dolby Atmos surround sound thing. There might be some headphones out there that have that, but like your $300 pair of like, I don't know, like the kind of, the like three hundred dollar headphones that you see people with walking around don't don't do that. The other mm-hmm. cool thing that I and I this is the other thing I was trying to remember that I think could be a game changer is transparency mode on over the ear headphones. Uh, hmm. That could be really useful. I don't know. Like we'll have to see, uh, but I can imagine just being able to like press a button and be able to hear something without having like whoop, take the headphones off, put them down. Could be nice. Especially well, when we walk around places again. But I will say, I mean, my jobbers have a pass-through mode. I don't think it's as good as transparency mode, but it's close. I mean, again, if you told me, like, Sean, these are $3.99, I'm like, 
cool, perfect. That's awesome, right? I just think when you hit 549, like that just that's just like Apple just rubbing it in your face saying, we know there's no competition for these in its kind of niche category. If you're going to get in the Apple ecosystem, you will pay us $549 for them as <laughs> Dan did. And so, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I just, I think they're fine. They're fine. I'm very curious, Dan, how they work for you. Because I think if you say there's no better headphones I've ever used with Apple devices than this, then I guess it's paid for itself, right? You know, we don't bulk at $1,000 iPhones anymore. Yeah. Yeah, they, they slowly boiled the frog on that one. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's again, 549 I think is a bad price, but it's not a surprising one. <laughs> it's really not. Fair. I just don't know if they look good. I got to see them. You got to wear them during the show, Dan, because I got to see them on your head. I, I, cool. I am so confused whether or not these will look good. We'll see you next week. Should, should be arriving tomorrow unless I have my first uh, uh, USPS mishap <laughs> here. I, you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if Apple slipped them a little extra money to the post office to make sure their their stuff arrives on time. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, we've talked about that. We've got a few other two weeks worth of stories in here, guys. If there's anything else worth worth talking about, oh, baby. I hope there is because we still have some time left. I think there definitely is. So I am. Uh... There's actually this whole, uh, we got Fitness Plus, um, and uh, actually, let's start with the Apple family sharing thing, because I, I have some some questions about, about this stuff that I, ha- I haven't been able to figure out. Okay, well, maybe we can help. Time will tell. Uh, this is an interesting one, uh, although on The Verge here, I'm getting an ad for a some sort of narrative story shot on those uh, Snapchat glasses with the cameras in them. Oh, I'm getting something else. I'm getting Facebook says a, updated internet regulations. Oh. No, this is it's a spectacles story. Your world reimagined with spectacles. I'm gonna learn. Do they more. still sell spectacles? They do. Oh, it, you click on it. It says the future of storytelling. That's <laughs> wow. Real people, real perspectives. Wow. These so they have a bunch of creators shooting with these glasses. And yes, you can buy new... spectacles three. Yeah, these new Spectacles three they look like um, they look like something your dentist would wear or like a surgeon with the the like the magnifying glasses that flip down. Yeah, it looks a little cool. bit evil genius. That's awesome, man! I wish these weren't. If these were like a buck ninety nine, I'd consider it. <laughs> 380 is a little much. Uh, anyway, not to get distracted here. Uh, Apple announced that subscriptions and one-time in-app purchases can now be shared among families. If you buy a consumable item like coins in a game, you'll still be the ones who can use them. But if you unlock an ad-free or pro version of an app, it should be eligible for the new family sharing program. They announced the chain back in, change back in June, but it's officially live. Uh, it's up to developers to individually flip that switch. Um, it's a manual opt-in uh, right there. That's pretty much it. So with Apple family sharing and the Apple one family plan, what are, are those two things related? What are the differences? They are. So the idea is family sharing. One adult in your family invites other members to join and sets up accounts Family sharing is set up. The group chooses what services and features they'd like to share and use. Now, some of that is storage. Some of that is purchases like apps, music, movies, and some of it is services. And this is where Apple One comes in, Dan, where you can subscribe to Apple TV individually and share it with your family, or you can get an Apple One subscription and share it with your family as well. Um, So basically anything you can give Apple money for can more or less fall under a family subscription. But wait a second. Didn't they just change the rules in this story so that if I had subscribed to Apple TV, then anyone in my iCloud family would get that subscription? Then why would I subscribe to Apple One? Because it's uh, cheaper. 
because you're buying multiple services at the same time. So if you bought mm-hmm. to share with your family, Apple TV Plus, Apple Music, Apple News, Apple Arcade, blah, 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 Apple Fitness, it's cheaper to get the bundle Apple One family plan than it is to get each and share it with your family, I believe okay. is the theory. You also get the shared iCloud storage as well. Question, can you be can you be in a iCloud family and not share storage? And have your it's own shared, storage? It, well, it's shared as in it just counts towards a pool. It's oh. not like people can access each other. The files are private. You're just sharing like a number of gigabytes. Got it. Okay. And how uh, how does one go about doing this? Uh, have you, have you done the, this, I guess? No. This, you know, this is the one part of family sharing I've never actually taken the time to figure out is like, what is a family? Like, how could the three of us get a family account? Um, theoretically, I think we should. I don't know. Um, I'm trying it, to see. It does. It does. It tells me here that set, getting set up is simple. <laughs> getting set up is very difficult. You should not try it. Uh, <laughs> you were right. They have an organizer, and then they invite other family members to join. It looks like what would be weird is anyone who's an adult. They're not called adults. They're called parents slash guardians. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't. It doesn't seem to me like you have to share an address or anything like that that I can find. Right. And the thing that confused me was that I had heard about iCloud family sharing because that that for a while that was how you shared app purchases. Like, oh, I I bought uh, Tweetbot and now everyone can use it or whatever. But then when I'm on the Apple One website under the Premier plan, which is different than the family plan, but I guess they hey, yeah, both family and Premier say uh, blah 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 share with up to five other people. I'm like, is it the same five other people that uh, are in the family plan or could it be any five people? Sharing what? Uh, the Apple One subscription. If you, oh, here we go. If you have the Apple One family or Premier plan, you can use family sharing to share. Up, oh, I see. Oh, yeah, so once Apple you're... TV Plus and Apple Arcade always include family sharing, even in the individual plan. That's not confusing at all. I know. It's. I mean, it kind of, d- depending on your level, but it's basically anything you can give Apple money to can be shared in a plan. And that is even more true now when you talk about the in-app purchases piece. Um, if you buy a movie on iTunes, you know, it's or the movies app, whatever it's called now, um, that's shareable books, ebooks. I mean, it's really, really sort of anything. You can also track devices in Find My um, when you when you have a family account a little more aggressively, I believe, than you can if you're just like friends. You can do uh, shared albums do automatically in the Photos app. Right. That what was that called? Photo streams. Back in the uh, day. A sh- now they're I think they're just shared albums. Shared albums. Oh, and you can use the Reminders app to send timer location reminders to members of your family. That's actually cool. I mean, there is a lot of, you know, if if anyone's device goes missing, everyone else in the group can help find it, even if it's offline. Hmm. Hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? (laughs) Oh, interesting. (laughs) Oh, never mind. Okay. I'm going through the setup and it said up to six people. And then I was like, ah, oh, but the other thing is that five people are like, great. Five other people, not including myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, my question is, if you set up a family sharing account, does everything you've bought in the past become part of that? I would think. Yeah. And what about the things that the other people may have bought that they're bringing into to the family? Does it all just dump in like, oh, Dan bought... Uh, what's a movie Dan would buy? Cool Runnings. Dan bought Cool Runnings on iTunes. Never even heard of that movie. <laughs> that's cool the Runnings. Uh, that's the John Candy about the Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> okay. Anyway, great movie. Wow. You should watch it sometime. All right. Uh, how about this? Dan bought Johnny Mnemonic. Is that better? Keanu Reeves? I haven't heard of that <laughs> one either. Dan bought Speed 2 Cruise Control. <laughs> and uh, that's the one with the boat. Um. No, still not doing it for you. 
Okay. Me Dan too. bought a movie to be named later. Does that mean then I can just suddenly watch it once we plug in family sharing? I don't know. Right, but what is, is there a difference in whose library gets shared versus who's the person who started the family and people who just join? When you when, oh, okay, it says here when you set up purchase sharing, everyone in the group gets immediate access to the songs, albums, movies, TV shows, books, and app purchased by family members who choose to share them. Who choose to just, share them? Interesting. So you can yeah, join a family and choose not to share your stuff. Yeah, it says just select the family member whose collection you'd like to browse, then download or play the content you choose. Other family members can access your collection in the same way. If you want to keep some purchases private, you can choose to hide individual items. That's crazy. There must be a whole other UI for that. I've never like you have never seen that option. Yes, there is. Wow. Right. There is. It's like a whole bunch of stuff we've never seen. Crazy. Hmm. Well, thanks for explaining. Now, yeah. Oh, it says here, not all content is eligible to be shared. I wonder if there's what you can't share. Individual subscriptions to Apple Music, Apple One, and some other third-party subscriptions. We know that you got to get the family version. Student subscriptions, such as a student subscription, Apple Music, consumable in-app purchases, such as Coin or Gems, items that are no longer available in the App Store, iTunes Store, Bookstore, Apple TV app. That makes sense. Items that you or another that have hidden. Some apps from the App Store, so I wonder if that's a um, if that's a developer thing. But otherwise, yeah, you can share pretty much everything else. It's, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so there we go. We definitely learned something. And as you mentioned, Dan, uh, Fitness Plus is now available. Another thing you can share with your family. Woohoo! Yeah. It... Uh, yep. Keep going. I just, well, I mean, we I talked about reflecting. it on the show. <laughs> I, I not meant much to try it out to it. today um, yeah. before the show. I would have been able to talk about it. But uh, so I thought I was doing works, right? So I need some of my devices to be working throughout the day up until the point at which I would have done an exercise. So I thought, well, let me, I know I need to update my watch. So I'll update the watch and then I'll update the iPad because we don't really have a TV here. So I'll use that. And then I'll do the exercise. So then I, I was like, like, great. Now work's over. It's like pre-dinner, gonna do some of the stuff. So I was like, all right. And I was like, wait, how do you how do you turn on how do you get the fitness plus? Is it an Apple TV app? I'm looking around, I don't see it. I was like, okay, Google, like how to get Apple Fitness Plus. Like, oh, open up the fitness app. I was like, open up the fitness app. But I don't have the fitness app on the iPad, it was never there. Like, oh, you can download the fitness app for the iPad. I was like, oh, okay. So I, I go in the app store, I search fitness. I was like, nothing. There's a bunch of other fitness apps. I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. So then I click from the story to like open up the link in iTunes or the app store, I guess, for the fitness app. And it's like, boom, fitness app. And you, you know how you can see if something is built for iPad based on the kind of screenshots you get out of the app store? Apple or iPad screenshots, everything looked good. And at the top, it says, this app is not compatible with your device. Is there some kind of, like, weird, like, do I not have a new enough iPad? Like, my iPad's pretty new. Um, no, apparently, like, when Apple released the fitness app, they just forgot to update it so that it, it can actually run on iPad. So they have all the marketing, <laughs> all the screenshots. As of like six o'clock, at least you couldn't actually download it. So then I was like, "Well, shit! Now I have to update my phone." That took an hour because the internet here isn't great, and so I didn't get to try it. Oh, yeah, it's kind of wild because um, Fitness Plus is in the Fitness app that's already on the iPhone and Apple Watch. But as you mentioned, Dan, the Fitness app is not pre-installed on the iPad, so you have to download it from the App Store. And Apple TV users automatically get the app once they've updated to TVOS fourteen three. Yeah, I'm excited to I'm excited to try it. And I was I was just thinking today about um, like I think this year somehow, despite everything that happened, like there will. So, anyways, I, I was saw that the, the reviews about this seem good. It seems to do everything it needs to do from the re reviews I read, uh, which is cool. Uh, but I was thinking about the year. And I was like, Fitness Plus looking like it'll it'll at least be, it'll be better than Apple News. It, it looks like it'll be just as good as like like 
Apple Music or Apple TV. Like nothing may be groundbreaking, but it does does what it needs to do. You had M1 MacBooks. You had the the new cheap iPads. You had new iPhones, which are you know exactly what you expect. I think that's like two. Oh, and and uh, AirPods Max, probably some other stuff. I'm forgetting. Uh, but that's like two or three more products that then seem to typically get released by Apple in a year. So th- they had quite the quite the barn burn a year. I you know I guess they release new laptops all the time, but I think we'll be remembering these laptops for like. 10 years from now, like we think back on that, that second generation MacBook Air that everyone loves so much, we'll like think back to this year, which is, which is kind of crazy. But even if they hadn't done that, like I think there's, they still had a bunch of new stuff this year, which is cool. Well, that's what fascinates me about Fitness Plus, maybe more than anything, is Fitness Plus is really the first time Apple is generating their own content. I guess Apple TV Plus to a degree. But even more so with this, I mean, they're shooting it, I'm assuming, somewhere in the Apple campus. I have no idea <laughs> in a way they've never done before. And so um, I'm really curious if this proves to be lucrative, you know, what other way could they start their own record label? I mean, who knows? <laughs> you know, it's pot. They yeah, make their own TV I, shows. Did I see in the little marketing push I got when I updated the OS that they have new fitness programs, activities every week? Yeah, that's crazy. Yep. Yep. No, they're 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 going to be pumping content out for this. Like, I'm sure they built some huge studio to to handle this because it's it's a just a it's a content play. That's all it is. So very interesting. Oh, my God. Well, what was sorry? You just saying, are they going to start making their own content made me think of that thing it was like the trivia, the live trivia game show app that happened. Oh, HQ. HQ. Oh, my God. Yeah, God bless it. Us. Yeah. Is that still a thing? What was that God, guy's no. name? What was the guy's name? Oh, the, the HQ guy. That was it Scott name? something? Yeah, it was. I want to say Scott Scottsman. But it was Scott awesome. Rogowski. Scott Rogowski. Ugh, just Crazy. the worst. Should we take the time to see what he's up to today? <laughs> yes, we should. Uh... His Wikipedia says he co-hosts a baseball program broadcast on the subscription video streaming network. Uh, is it Dazen? 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 D-A-Z-N? Wow, I've never heard of it. D-A-Z-N is actually, it's probably one of the bigger streaming services you've never heard of. But the reason is it's all sports and it's a ton of like UFC. Um, and a few other... Um, they, they've done some big uh, contracts with some other... They do a lot of soccer, stuff like that. Hmm. Um, Neat. But anyway. Scott Rogowski. Yep. So Apple is on the move. Uh, guys, we've got time for one more story if you'd like to talk about it. Hmm. It can be done. But don't all jump at once. Um, speaking of content, can we talk about the Warner Bros. thing? That was another thing that confused me. Uh, first of all, I think we should always call them Warner Bros. <laughs> Warner Bros. Bros. The Warner Bros. Sup? It's like Super uh, Smash Bros. Exactly. I love it. It's very, very hip. Uh, yes, indeed. HBO Max, uh, America's favorite streaming service, maybe. Um is doing okay. Yeah, owned by Warner Media, who is owned by AT and T, and like a lot of these companies, they believe who is streaming owned is the by the Shinehart Wig Media company. <laughs> Wig Company. <laughs> it's owned by Halliburton. <laughs> oh, exactly. We, oh, uh, and oh. the issue is, is that they're not getting enough streaming subscribers hiccuping which i don't like so i've got to see what's using all my resources sean your video has been disabled due to YouTube, internet but... quality issues that's that's on you oh, google chrome is using you. oh no hello um anyway i'm just gonna Go keep talking because it. it's recording all of us locally anyway so that's the beauty of it um 
So uh, Warner Media, owned by AT and T, uh, has an issue because they have stockholders who expect a great return on their investment. And if HBO Max doesn't keep getting lots and lots and lots and lots of subscribers, they feel like they're not being successful. At the same time, movie theaters are on the brink of disaster. They're closed for business. Hard way to make money. And HBO has a uh, HBO. I shouldn't say HBO. Warner Brothers has a bunch of movies they'd like to release and nowhere to release them. Hence, their incredible, shocking turn of events where for the next 12 months, Warner Brothers is going to release their entire 2021 slate, 17 films. And these aren't rinky-dink films. These are major billion-dollar franchises are going to debut both on HBO Max and in theaters at the same damn time. Day and date releases. Now, they'll be on uh, HBO Max for, I believe, uh, 31 days, at which point they'll be pulled off HBO Max and be in theaters and rentals and all that until they come back to HBO Max much later on. They say it's a unique one-year plan. They don't expect to continue it beyond 2022, but this is immensely unprecedented. We're talking major franchises, including Matrix 4, the Dune remake, Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights, uh, the new Suicide Squad movie, G- Godzilla vs. Kong. Apparently, they're making another Mortal Kombat movie. This, the new Space wow. Jam remake, among many this others. This is wild. I'm going to... Well, so I didn't realize yeah. that this. it was like they were going to be on there for a while, and then they were going to be gone for a while. That's cool. I'm going to watch. Yeah. Like the Disney Mulan thing, where each one is like 20 bucks. They 100% come with your subscription. The first one is actually going to be uh, Wonder great. Woman 1984, which will be Amazing. available on Christmas. It's bonkers. Uh, think of it this way. Wonder Woman, I have to look and see what the last one made at the box office, but uh, hundreds and hundreds of, especially uh, globally, you know, a billion dollars. I mean, it is potentially what they're sacrificing to put this on HBO Max. If there was ever a better way to quantify just how important HBO Max is to the future of Warner Media. Um, it's right there. The box office for Wonder mm. Woman, eight hundred and twenty one. Well, I mean, it's, it also dollars. seems like a, you know, like you said, this is this is a, a timely thing, right? Like they they wouldn't be doing this if there wasn't a pandemic. Like if we could all go to the theaters with impunity, I don't think. They'd... Well, that's the question. Well, that's the question, though, mm. c- because they're saying they're doing it for now, and they say it's temporary, but. Maybe it won't be. I mean, if you look at it from Warner Media's perspective, it's they don't have to give a cut to the theaters, which frankly is only about 10% of your ticket, but they don't have to give a cut to them. They don't have to pay to market it to get people in theaters. So it's less marketing dollars. And there's also a lot of weird, and I'm not an expert on this by any stretch, but there's a lot of like, um, like union stuff you skirt. Like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with residuals, where if you're in a movie 20 years later, if someone mm-hmm. buys the movie, you get a penny or whatever. You get some cut of the movie for being in it. If it never goes in theaters, there's no box office. You don't, or people aren't buying it. It's a subscription. You don't get the residual money. So there's all kinds of weird, like financial reasons why they can sort of cut around it, if you will. Huh. Well, that's cool. It's wild uh, if if I had to put a word on it. I mean, it really is. I would argue. I don't know. Are, are you guys I do a lot HBO of my Max streaming on watchers? HBO Max. I only did it for Westworld. Hmm. I, I would say, again, I guess it's different for each person, but... I think it's a pretty solid service. I found a lot on there to watch, and I think they have a good library. And to get these kind, that's one thing Netflix will never be able to do because they don't make hit franchise movies. Is they'll never, you know, if, if Disney came out and said, "Oh, the the next Avengers movie is going to be on Disney Plus the same day it's in theaters," I mean, Netflix can never compete with that. Uh, that's one advantage these these services potentially have. Interesting. I wonder, though, in a world where there are no longer movie theater movies, does anyone make hit franchise movies? I don't know. It's a great question. You know, there's no sort of midnight release, 
box office opening weekends. There's no, the, the buzz sort of gets lost. And we see it with Netflix released content all the time where <laughs> Queen's Gambit is hot for a week and then no one ever talks about it again. You know? um, tweet today. Let me see if I can find it. Yep. Here we go. Um. Oh, man. man. Oh, I thought this was a I thought this was an original tweet. It wasn't. Uh, this guy stole it from something else. But I will put it in the chat so that... Did you both watch uh, Queen's Gambit? I haven't finished it, but I watched some. I Absolutely watched some. not. Right, well, this... Uh, this tweet might might tickle your fancy. It's a it's a scene from uh, Queen's Gambit, and the caption is "Chestnuts boasting in an open foyer." <laughs> I'm gonna have to look. I don't. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> Um. Yeah, nothing, I gotta start I, watching to some of these things, huh? <clears throat> I've been avoiding starting a new series. You know, uh, I talked a while back about how Pluto TV had a uh, Deal or No Deal channel. They just <laughs> launched a Price is Right retro channel. I don't know if you guys have seen this. And they only, it's a 24-7 channel of just like late 70s, early 80s Price is Right <laughs> episodes. That's pretty much what I've been watching now. This sounds like the kind of thing you It's kind of amazing. Oh, it is so, and you're like, you know, it's like a, it's a 1982 Chrysler LeBaron. And I'm like, oh, that's like $8,700. <laughs> I know that because I've seen so many of these stupid episodes. Actually, the Le- LeBaron's a very nice car. It's very expensive. It's a luxury car. Uh, yes. Yeah, so no, it's very, it's like, oh, I know Pepsodent was 53 cents back in 1979. Who knew? You know? Yeah. Not me, apparently. Um. Yeah, so I know, Cole, that you were really excited for the new Tom and Jerry movie uh, where the whole world is live action, but Tom and Jerry are cartoons for some reason. Uh, it's like the a Who Framed Roger it's Rabbit situation. Um, but Except there aren't even like the concept of cartoons in this world. Like At least in Roger Rabbit, they're like, tunes are a thing that exists. But in this, it's like, just for some reason, they're cartoons. And they do cartoon things, and no one seems concerned about it. That's weird. They treat them like they're a regular cat and a mouse, bizarre. but they're not. Very strange. There you go. And you can watch it with your HBO Max subscription. All righty. Uh, why don't we chug, chug, chug on over to picks? Uh, we've got a couple in here. You guys did a good job filling out the sheet. Uh, I will quickly say on the last episode, you guys seemed confused by my pick, which was the desktop whiteboard. <laughs> you, 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 I loved how you like did my pick anyway. Um, and then just, you weren't even like, you didn't even like shit on it. That would have been funnier, but you're like, I don't, I don't really get it. Um, and I will tell you, it's one of my favorite things. That's why I picked it. Um, just to have something to write quick notes on that you can then later erase. Um, and people get impressed when they walk up and see stuff written on it. So anyway, just to define my little pick. Uh, this week, Riverside.fm is my pick. It's the service we are using to record this podcast. Uh, it's a brand new service. Uh, and what's great about it is it records the audio uncompressed locally on each participant's machine and uploads it in real time while the show is happening. Same with the video up to 4k quality. Um, and so everything is native without all the hassle because it does it automatically. And so I can just click and download Dan's audio and Colby's audio and my audio all in full resolution and quality to make a better sounding show easily. It's not free, but I might as well plow money into this hobby that hasn't made me a dime over 300 episodes. Why not? So Check it out, riverside.fm, uh, if you're looking for a new way to record things. It makes it sound great. Dan, <laughs> I clicked on your link, and it makes me jealous I don't have a Mac. Uh, this thing well, looks it's awesome. called AirBuddy. I, this is great. What is this? you have an iPhone or an iPad, and you know what happens when you take out your, your little AirPods case and you hold it up to your uh, phone, it's basically that. 
So uh, when you, instead of having to do the thing where you, you like put your AirPods in and you go, okay, okay, system preferences, sound, input, click on the thing, wait a weird amount of time. Ding, ding, hear the sound in your headphones. Oh, okay, now it's good to go. Um, instead of doing that, you open your case, it pops up on the screen and you click, yes, I want to connect to that one. And then it does all that stuff for you. Um, it also uh, has a cool little widget in the top bar where it shows you like kind of like exactly the battery widget you get on iOS. So you can see the left and right AirPod case and all of your other devices and their battery in the top bar, which is pretty cool. I think it costs money. Uh, Nine ninety nine, yeah, but it's. I think it's just you get it for, uh, for forever. So, yeah, I've been. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's not yeah. through. It's not through the app store. Good call. Yeah, you got got to go to v two dot airbuddy dot app. Right. Weird. Why do they have the v two? Maybe oh. just go to airbuddy dot app. That works just. That works just fine. <laughs> nice. Oh, the other cool thing yeah, this is, is awesome. I'm jealous you I don't can get to set use connection it. modes right. Ah. So you could say like connect and then you could right click on the connect on the little bubble that shows your, your AirPods case on the screen and say <clears> connect <throat> for music, where it'll turn noise canceling on or connect for like a, a call and then it'll put transparency mode on and turn the microphone on and set the input and all that cool stuff too, all in one, one press. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, Why is this not built into Mac OS? <laughs> right. I feel like, like this, this is, is exactly the kind of thing. That I, they I hope rip they rip this off. Year, <laughs> which makes me wonder. I mean, it's if it's ripping iOS off, so it's it's only fair, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I hope he gets a bunch of nine ninety nine and and makes a lot of money off it before Apple rips him off. That's awesome, everybody. Check it out, everybody.app. That's dope. Oh, thanks. Dan's always got the best software picks. I'm telling you, this guy, he knows his software. Uh, Colby's I got some hardware. What are you picking after this After some time of owning it, that I really like the HomePod Mini. I feel like it has been much poo-pooed uh -huh. in the, I don't know, the Mac OS people zeitgeist. But... I think it's great. Like, I don't know it. So here's the thing that's, I mean, Siri, Siri, right? Like if you ask Siri a question that is too hard, she still says like, I found some results on the web. Do you want me to send them to your phone? No, I obviously don't want you to do that. That's stupid. But like, you know, if you like forego the possibility <laughs> that you can ask Siri a question, and have her give you an answer, which I, I, I gave up on long, a long time ago. It's great, and it has the 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 thing that's cool about it versus Siri in other any other context is like she always like it's always available. Like she always answers. Um, obviously, I live in a very small home, so like any literally anywhere in my home, the HomePod can hear me, uh, which is super useful. It, I think I mentioned before. It was like you didn't have to do anything to set it up. Like you put your phone next to it to like give it the Wi-Fi information and it was done. And then like after that, it can turn on my lights and turn off my lights and do all the things like it can give me, you know, add reminders for me and do uh, set timers. It can do multiple timers like you would expect. Um, it can set like alarms the my favorite thing that it does is it can turn on and off the apple tv which turns off the tv itself too via the hdmi stuff which is surprisingly useful hmm. it's, it's like the most annoying part of the apple tv is turning it off because you have to like hold down the stupid <laughs> tv button and then click again <laughs> um yeah so i'm very pleased i use it for timers and to turn on the lights that's pretty much it I think it's fine. How is it's it? Not how's the music sound coming speaker, out of it? But like for a tiny speaker, I think it's good enough. I like. 
Because that was always the issue I had with the Amazon stuff. Is like I love yeah, the tech I, in it, I but they always sounded for really music. crappy. I use it like sometimes I'll use it in the morning to listen to like mm. NPR or something. The 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 proximity like airplay to it thing works okay. Like it does it does work. It just takes longer than you want it to take. Um I think that might be on purpose. Like I think it might just take a minute probably so you don't do it on accident, but I wish mm-hmm. it were a little more seamless. Like I wish I could like whoosh, I don't know. I wish I could do some like incantation to make it happen immediately. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, or just a deal know, with a the devil like, if you will. Flourish of the wrist to like swoosh your your podcast onto the home pod. Um I I think it's good. I don't know. I like I don't really want a, like an Alexa listening to me or a Google thing or certainly not a Facebook thing, dear god. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to accept a theory thing. But you it do is want very a like thing. the timers are very useful. Yeah. It's always the turning on the lights. So. Nice. Hey, I, I'm, you know, it, but this does remind me of why I, I don't understand how money works because I don't understand how the HomePod mini costs $99, but the AirPods max costs $549. Like I get they're different, but I also don't get how right, one like if costs you took the AirPods four hundred and fifty dollars into, into a ball. Like, would it be bigger or smaller than the HomePod <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if I took like a power saw and cut the mini in half and or strapped you get, one, you to just each get ear, two minis. And I mean, that's a way cheaper way. To do it. <laughs> <laughs> you could get four minis and do it. Uh, yeah, absolutely uh, wild. Well, that's awesome. HomePod Mini, very nice, very nice. We're getting all kinds of fun toys these days, guys. That is all she wrote that is the end of it uh anything you guys would like to say or do or plug or talk about nope. before we we wrap it up i'm halfway through the up for debate episode where you pick your football team <laughs> oh boy spoiler alert i make a bad decision so <laughs> unsurprisingly matt matt pinged me yesterday he's like sean what would you think if we use <laughs> the same process we did with the nfl to help me matt pick an nba team i'm like you don't do I, that just pick a team you like <laughs> honestly it's not going to end well i regretted it almost immediately and i do have a and i say at the end of the last episode i say the team i pick i'm going to order stuff as soon as we finish the show I and did, i did and it's I honest did way the part where matt, it, so. matt confessed to having it went great. started wearing philadelphia eagles <laughs> gear <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah. yep he's trying to fit in with the locals He's trying to fit in with the look because you can't be a Jets fan, God forbid. So might as well go with the Eagles. Well, you know what's great? That's a great segue up for debate, uh, which like this show had a little bit of a, a lapse in new episodes. Uh theoretically is taping this weekend. <laughs> Guys, you're gonna be excited to learn. We're writing our own children's book uh this week, which I am so excited Mike about. Pence. You know, it's what all the celebrities are doing these days. I know, isn't um everyone seems to be writing their own book. Actually, I have a game. I have a game I actually wrote for that episode, not to spoil it, where I have a list of celebrities. Some have written children's books and some haven't. And I'm going to see if Matt, you guys want to try one or two out before we go home. All right, let's see here. Did the following write a children's book? Jim Carrey. Oh, definitely. He did. That's very good. Al Gore. Seems like a missed opportunity. He did not. He did not. There you go. Yes. Uh, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> yes, he did. That's very good. La- I, and I'll give you, I have more on here. I don't want to spoil all of them. Oh. I'll give you one more. Michael Jordan. How am I That's so right. good he at guessing I was surprised. A I thought Michael Jordan with a lot of athletes. Like LeBron did a lot of athletes. Did. You're very good at this. You got skills, man. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, so that'll be a fun one. I, I have no idea what it's going to be about. Uh, it's going to be massive. And stay tuned to that show, by the way, because I'm already getting excited for the Super Bowl, which is one of our big annual events is coming up. So uh, that'll be great over at UpForDebate.tv. In the meantime, 
the show is dumbpack.io. We only got two more Mondays left in the month, um, which is kind of crazy, left in the year. So it means our year-end wrap-up is coming up before you know it. Um, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Dontpack.io is our website. You can go there and get all the episodes as well as links to all the picks so you don't have to remember them. That's a handy thing we've done for you. You're welcome. Uh, you can also subscribe wherever you get podcasts or the video version being on YouTube. And of course, uh, you can follow us at Don't Panic Show on Twitter, Don't Panic Show at gmail.com. But that's going to do it here. So on behalf of Colby and Dan, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time for another fantastic episode of Don't Panic.